Evening folks, hope you're doing all right, wherever you are in the world at the moment. Here's John, I'm here again this week and I hope you're doing all right. And this week as advertised, we're gonna make ourselves a bit of a kind of vegan feast, sorry, a bit of a vegetarian feast, okay? And it can be vegetarian, it can be vegan. So what we're gonna do, hi guys, is to whip up a couple of dishes, okay? Uh, so let's say, you know, you want to reduce your meat intake, but you don't want to worry so much about, um, you know, maybe you want something that's filling, but also, um, as I say, meat free. So that's what we're going to work on today. Two dishes, and we're going to do a uh, vegetable parcels, puff pastry parcels, uh, and then we're also going to do um, some cauliflower cheese as well. Ah, oh. hi Ezra, nice to have you with us. Cool, what did you study, Ezra? Uh, great to have you with us. As I say, King's grads, prospective King's students, everybody's welcome. So let me know what you're up to, how life is, and what you've been cooking lately, what you've been eating lately. So we'll crack on, okay? Uh, otherwise, I'll be leaving you hanging. So first, let me tell you, uh, hi, let me tell you what we're going to need with this dish. Uh, very simple, so you have the puff pastry parcels, and for that, you're just going to need some shop-bought puff pastry, you can buy it for a pound down the shop, uh, and just a pack of leeks, two leeks, three leeks, however many you have, that will do. Uh, the great thing about this recipe, even if you don't have leeks, any vegetables will do in the same method I'm going to show you in the wok. Okay, so basically pastry, leeks, that's one thing. Cauliflower cheese, we got ourselves a nice cauliflower here and obviously some cheese, hence the name, and with that, you just need a bit of semi skimmed milk and a bit of flour. Uh, that's pretty much all, okay? Obviously, you got the olive oil, you got all that stuff. Wait a second, let me just check with you guys. Ah, education policy. Ah, an MA. Ah, oh, cool. So, Ezra, I'm going to be uh, hopefully studying a master's myself um, as well, so we'll see how that goes. But for now, I'm just kind of. Uh, Finding my time, you know, getting ready for whatever the future may hold. Okay, so we've got to crack on with this. As I say, let me know if you've made this sort of dish before. In terms of prep, we don't want to let any of these leeks go to waste, okay? So when you look, you can kind of see sometimes all these bits with these kind of bits picked in dirt. Give your leeks a little bit of a wash if you need. Make sure your oven's on, by the way. You want the oven on at about 200 degrees. Okay. So. Again. There we go. Leaks nice and clean. So we want to get these leaks going on here, okay? We want to get these leaks just sizzling away on a kind of low heat. And you can chop those into maybe kind of inch thick if you want, uh, maybe less than an inch, just little little circles, okay? Um, don't really don't worry about the thicknesses to be honest. Just the thicker you cut these leaves, the longer they're going to take to cook. By the way, I'm quite far away from this camera, so sometimes it can be hard to see what you guys are saying. So I'm so sorry if I'm delayed in responding. All right. Um, this cauliflower cheese, I'll be doing it in the oven, and I'll be roasting the cauliflower. So I don't know if that's something you guys have seen before. I've only started doing it that way recently. I want to share it with you because I made cauliflower cheese uh, when I did kind of live streams for Stamford Street at SSA 
um, if, if any of you guys watching a, uh, from, from there or live there. Um, but I steamed the cauliflower. So but today we're going to roast it, okay? So turn your pan on. You want kind of a high heat, get that, get that wok all nice and hot. Little splash of oil. Don't go too crazy. So you see around this size, do you see this? Uh, that might be what you want really. I mean, if you want it smaller, if you want it to cook faster, then chop them up finer. But I'm gonna put them all just the way they are for now. And this will be a filling for our parcels, okay? But you can literally put anything in there within reason. So it's really flexible. All right, this is the boring part, you know, when I just kind of start chopping up vegetables. All right. So, just get your wooden spoon and just toss it around around the leaves, coat them in your oil. Because they'll start to kind of fall apart and break down. And then you get yourself, you see that? Yeah? Then they'll start to fall apart and they'll start to cook faster and you'll hear a bit of hissing, a bit of sizzling going on. All right, so our oven's currently heating up here. My oven takes a while, it's kind of a larger oven. And for this dish, um, I mean, you won't need much. Again, I'm making two separate meals. You can make the cauliflower cheese and by itself, that would be great with potatoes um, as a dish, lovely. Or you can make the parcels and have those potatoes if you wanted to really. Uh, there's kind of quite a lot of flexibility with this sort of stuff. But I'm greedy, so I'm gonna cook two meals and eat both of them. I'm joking, it's not greedy, but it's just a bit of variety. Good way of getting lots of vegetables, again, in your diet. Because I've had meat the last few days, so I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit, okay. Cauliflower, it's a bit of a beast. Um, you can cook the cauliflower leaves, um, and I would recommend that. I mean, I'll show you maybe another time. But as you might be able to see, these leaves are looking a little bit sad. So I'm going to put them out of their misery. We won't be cooking with those leaves today. We'll just be cooking with the main cauliflower. Florets. So just kind of rip those off with your hands and you can kind of chop the rest off. Again, turn your heat kind of down low, medium, medium to low. And those leaks will just break down. In around 10 minutes, I'd say. Chop your cauliflower in half. You can see it, I think. Um, and you've got this big kind of central hard uh, kind of stalk, hardcore. Cut it into four, okay? And once you cut it into four, you can cut out this um, hard central stalk. And just dispose of any of the green stuff, okay? We don't need those. Again, take it, take your knife and kind of slice through. So get the green stuff off. Cauliflower, flour, in half. Cut that off, there we go.
All right. Good. So now at this stage, you basically have your leeks going, you have cauliflower, there you go. What you want to do is kind of break that apart into little bits. Not too tiny. See my hands here? Kind of around, maybe that size will do. And again, to remind her, popping at this point means two separate meals cauliflower cheese, or two separate dishes cauliflower cheese and vegetable parcels, alright? And that pastry. In fact, we're going to put that back in the fridge for a little bit. But in a little while, I will take that pastry out and then we'll make our little parcels. So, as you can kind of see, let me show you. I don't know if you see that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Avanash, you ask why the, why the attire for today. Uh, I was just getting a bit bored of wearing the same old clothes, and there's not really any special occasions going around about the moment, so I thought, why not make today a special occasion? I'm here with you guys, and just dress up for fun. Because otherwise, my heart bit my wardrobe kind of because I'm worn, you know, uh, out of use. So I thought I'd bring it back to life for a little bit. Have a bit of fun. You can see those leaks there. Kind of breaking down a bit more. Oh yeah, chop your cauliflower up. Into kind of florets. You'll be able to break it up with your bare hand, probably. So just, you can see the stalks, you kind of separate them. Uh, don't make too much mess like I did, but even if you do, it's okay. You can clean it up later. There we go. And if you haven't eaten cauliflower before, I'd recommend it. It'll cost you less than a pound, actually. I've only got this one for 89p at a Tesco. So, it is not a luxury item, cauliflower. This isn't truffles, you know, this isn't some crazy fancy stuff. This is uh, trying to keep it nice and simple, right? I think it's going to taste lovely and luxurious, right? So just keep breaking that up. There we go, you can see that. Let me show you. There we go. See that and then you can snap away all those little bits. With your bare hands or your human hands. And if they're not breaking apart, just cut them off near the stem, near the base of the cauliflower, and that will then give you a bit more. Make it easier to separate them. And if they're a bit big, just chop them in half and bob your ankle. I don't know why I said that, I never say that. Okay, again, depending on how big you like the cauliflower, I don't know, loads of different ways you can do it, lots of different ways you can cut it. So those leeks going all nicely. If you're worried your leeks are going to burn, then just chuck in a tiny splash of water and that will just keep everything moist and soft.
And at this point, I mean, feel free to just chuck a bit of salt and pepper in this, in these leeks, any seasoning, you know, you can keep it simple. A little bit of pepper. Here we go. Yeah, so, a bit of pepper in there. Ooh, what are we having here? Actually, let's add ourselves a bit extra, a tiny hint of chili powder. Yeah? In here. In our leeks. A bit of spice. Only a couple of little shakes. That's optional. You don't need to add that. Just leeks will do, just any vegetable will do. I keep it on the low heat, just simmer in there. That will do nicely. Cauliflower. By the way, once again, uh, as I always say, these things take far less time when you're not just bouncing around like I am. So um, these things are pretty easy once you get into practice. Cauliflower. You want a kind of little, uh, a sort of ceramic tray, uh, like this, is really handy for these sorts of dishes. Where you've got a uh, high enough size, it's not like a flat tray like this. You've got enough uh, depth in it so you can put the cauliflower in there basically. So just push your cauliflower into that tray, okay? All right, there we go. So all these little bits, don't let them go to waste. So, as you can probably see, this is quite a lot of cauliflower. If it's a bit too much, as I've discovered, feel free just to take a little bit of it. All right, there we go. And you kind of want... There we go, that's good. That's what we're talking about. All right. See that? I've uh, got a layer of cauliflower here. Put that in the oven at 200 degrees for 10 minutes. There we go. With the links, let me demonstrate to you again. See that? Kind of uh, soft and, and stringy. If you try a little bit of it, it's going to still be a little bit chewy, but much softer in the mouth. Which basically shows that we're nearly there. And your leeks are pretty much done. All right. So in the meantime, Whilst that cauliflower is basically doing its thing, we want to make a little sauce, okay? So by the way, the cauliflower wants to roast for 20 minutes, as a correction. That's what you want. 20 minutes, cauliflower roasts in there. Note to self, should have done it earlier. Well, there you go. That's the first thing you want to do when you're making cauliflower cheese. Put your cauliflower in the oven. Alternatively, you can boil it in a pan like this one, but I'm not going to bother with that. There's more faffing around. Right. There you go. You get yourself a cup of tea. Drink the cup of tea. Keep your hydration levels up. Mm. All right. 
So now what we're going to do is make ourselves a little sauce, uh, and that is the sauce of the cauliflower cheese. So for that, you're going to need 30 grams of butter. I've got a little bit on a plate here. And 30 grams of flour. And you'll need a little bit of milk, really. Um, basically, 250 millilitres of milk will do the trick. Let me just get myself my measuring jug. Here we go. There we go. You all want these little measuring cups. Well, this is a nice little bit. Hey ho. Around two fifty milliliters of milk. There we go. Okay. So let's get cracking on our sauce. Let's check on these leeks actually, shall we? Mm. Those leeks will be tasting pretty nice. So here we have, let's check our distances here, yeah that'll do, there we go, okay, so the leeks, I'm just going to leave those anyway, but they'll be done by now, they're soft, they're squidgy, you can try it at this point and they'll be, as I say, broken down, kind of mushy looking, um, but that's how you want them, alright? So, now we're on to our little sauce that goes with the cauliflower cheese, okay? Basically what you want to do is melt the butter in the pan, so that pan's on low heat. We want to add the butter and then add ourselves 20 grams, sorry, 30 grams of flour. So I'm going to measure out 30 grams of flour, okay? Right, that's a bit too much flour, but don't worry, just scoop out with your spoon, a little bit. There we go, perfect. 30 grams of flour. So basically, add your butter to the pan, perhaps in a more dignified way than I have with my bare hands. Again, my hands are clean. So, that's the trick. There we go. How much you melted your butter? Add your flour. In a spoon. And add flour. Basically, bit by bit. And once you kind of keep stirring that, um, you get a kind of light golden coloured little mix. And then you want to add your milk to it, all right? All 
Hi guys. Check on the cauliflower, see how that's doing. Good? Very good. I'm going to give that a shake around. There we go. All right. Next thing, we've got a little sauce here. So can you see that? There's only a little bit in there, but that's pretty much all you need. 30 grams of flour, 30 grams of um, butter. And you want to kind of gradually add in this milk, okay? And then you'll get yourself with a sauce, all right? So kind of keep adding the milk until it's smooth. Keep adding it in bits by bits, stirring it around. And eventually you'll arrive at a bit of a sauce, okay? Eventually those lumps will disappear and take around five minutes, not too long. And I can say, You'll get there, just pour that in. Give it a stir. Okay. We'll check on those leaks. Looking good. There we go. At the moment, that looks like really unsatisfying porridge. Uh, absolutely disgusting. It's a bit warm in here, so I don't know about you guys, but I found it quite cold earlier. Um, so that's why I was wearing all this stuff, but now certainly it's warm with all this heat around the oven. What you can also do is use a little whisk, if you fancy. That kind of just breaks up all those bits. One thing you can do is give And this kind of milky mix will eventually turn into a, a kind of silkier sauce. Sometimes it can take a little while, but you'll get there. And just as a reminder, let me know if I'm doing it wrong, okay? Because this isn't the perfect way of doing it. Uh, it's just my way. One method. And yeah, eventually those lumps start to disappear. And once it, it kind of loses its lumps, then that's when you want to add in the cheese, okay? <laughs> and the amount of cheese you kind of want to add in is around like at least 40 grams of cheese. Uh, I mean, if you like it cheesier, feel free to add more, you know? I'm going to stick today to 40 grams. Oh yeah, it's looking on you. As you might have to see, that's more of a sauce now. There you go.
Once you get to that point, you want to add your cheese. Right? And again, at least 40 grams. Okay? So feel free, turn your heat off when you feel that you've got there a kind of a sauce, a little bit of drip to it, and we're there. All right? Now those leaks, I'm going to turn them off. And at this point you can kind of take your pastry out, about 10 minutes, leave it on the side, okay? The hollow step is opening the packet. There we go. So cheese, as I say, about 40 grams of cheese. We'll do the trick. Put that over there. There we go. I hope this is not too hard for you guys to see. I know it's far away. But 40 grams of cheese. Sometimes it can take a little while, but you'll get there. And this is regular cheddar cheese. You can use any cheese you want, pretty much. Although mozzarella, I don't think mozzarella would work that well. But most hard cheeses will do the trick. One around 40 grams of that. There we go, a little bit more for luck. Because if you want to put a little bit of extra sheet on the top, let's do 50, shall we? Splash out 50 grams of cheddar. My hand's getting too tired, so I'm not going to push it too far. So yeah, 50 grams, that'll do. Now turn the heat. Back on, on that sauce of yours. If it starts to get a bit lumpy, add in a little bit of splash of more milk. Here we go. Thank you very much. There we go. That sound is probably the sound of me destroying the pan. Uh, I mean, it's okay. This isn't a non stick saucepan, so it's not going to suffer in the same way. Perhaps. So now you want to add your cheese. Again, I've been taking a little while. Uh, longer than usual. And by the way, these leaks that you've got here are just kind of sitting there. And yeah, okay. So add in most of your cheese, just drop it in there. Leave a tiny bit. That is for uh, a little topping. And just, just mix it in. And it'll 
gradually just melt. You can even turn the heat off now if you want. Okay, so what I like to do as well, here's a little tip if you want to kind of spice up your cauliflower cheese a little bit, add a little bit of nut. Sounds peculiar, I know, but just a couple of shakes, not too much. Yeah, tiny. And that just adds a nice edge, I can't exactly describe it, but a nice little edge of spice, trust me. That may works really well. When you don't really expect it to, but it does. Okay. So. Hmm. Don't need to say pretty good to me. Alright. Have a look at our bow flour. It's been roasting in there. As you can see, the tops of it become a little bit kind of brown there. I don't know it's weird to roast cauliflower, but trust me, it really works. That's very well. And also, you don't need oil there, as you may have observed. Now, mix in your sauce into your uh, mix, your cauliflower cheese mix. And then we'll bake it for a while. Alright? Uh, well, here we go. Here's what I want. Now these things, I find them so handy. <laughs> um, uh, you can use obviously a tea towel and stuff. Some people prefer using a tea towel. Understandable. So basically, you just take your cauliflower and then just transfer it in there. And that just ensures you get a nice even coating, really. Because you can pour the sauce on top if you want. Um, but if you do that, then you might not get the sauce in all the places you want to. So because I've got a lot of cauliflower here, this will take um, more time, perhaps, than um, on average, because this cauliflower is a bit larger than the average cauliflower. So typically, you basically put this in the oven for around 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm going to do it for about 20 minutes, basically. There we go. Okay, just chuck that in there. Go. Oh, oh now, there you go. So there we go. See that? That means it's time to make our pastry parcels. So mixing that sauce in with your cauliflower. Don't be afraid to be a bit rough with it. And once you've done that, in your tray, put it back in there.
Just put it in the last one. Mm. Sometimes we're able to get all of the sauce out, that's okay. Try and do as hard as you can. And the rest will wash up fine. So, let me show you this. There is the cauliflower cheese for now. There we go. And feel free, just to sprinkle a little bit of this cheese on top. And if you want to be kind of extra fancy, do a bit of parmesan. If you've got parmesan, but cheddar, plain old cheddar, that will do. If you want a bit of flavour of Italy, then I always recommend parmesan. You can get this. Just a little bit, a few shakes of it. There we go, we'll ask a few little grams of Parmesan. In the oven, about 20 minutes we're going to do it. Okay. Go. All right. So here comes time for our leaf parcels. Now here's our pastry. You kind of want to lay this out on your tray. If your tray's not big enough, then use two trays. Uh, that'll be fine. Or just chop it up a little smaller. The great thing about shop bought puff pastry is it costs a pound or so, and you also get free baking paper with it. You don't even need to uh, you don't even need to bother with trimming your own, to buying your own, comes with it. Cut off that edge, it's always a little bit too long last time, so. There we go, we don't need that anymore. And you've got that there, that's your basic um, basic sort of sort of design you want to go for. And I'm gonna go for you can do different amounts of, of um of parcels. And so I'm gonna do I'm going to do uh, yeah, four of them, all right? So get yourself a knife, any knife will do. And then what you want to do is just slice down. doesn't matter if it's perfectly symmetrical or anything. At least that's my excuse. And then just slice it. Now, like that, and you want to do it, so obviously, if you do it in half, you've got two, uh, but you want to do it kind of half and then half again, all right? So, do it without hitting your head, like I did. Do it once. Go. 
bear in mind that it starts to get a little bit soft. But that's all right. There we go, like that. And then again. And as you can see, this is so simple. Uh, I'm not going to show you to make pastry. You can make pastry if you want, but that's what the focus of this today. We're focusing on simplicity. Okay? So, you see that? We've got eight pieces, meaning do, 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 four individual bits. We've got our nice little leaf mix here. As you can see, it's properly broken down like the sauce, and it's cooled down a bit because you don't want it to be hot in there because otherwise it's going to be a bit um, of a kind of mess because you're going to start melting all the pastry and you don't really want that. Now, if you want to do a little egg kind of uh, egg glaze on it, make it nice and shiny and brown, get an egg or a bit of milk and just dab it on the top. With a little brush like one of these. I'm going to do one egg, crack it, there we go, make sure your hands are clean, and then you want to, okay, there we go, let's put it on, 20, let's put it on. Whisk it up if you want with a little fork. We'll come to that later, very shortly. And what you want a little bit more. There we go, more like it. Basically, one little spoonful of that on each one. Okay, not too much. And one teaspoon will do. Right, one, two, three, let's check my mathematics here. There we go. Perfect. So it can be a bit messy sometimes, don't worry about it. Doesn't that do perfect? Basically, you see them here. You want to just take one bit, put the top on top of it, and that pretty much does everything you need to do. Again, how you want to do that is up to you. Take your piece and just dump it on top of each bit. All right. Once you've done that, as you can see, they're not, they're a bit close together for me, really. But when you do that, uh, you want to basically do something on the edges that we call crimping, poke hole with fork in the top of each one. And then what you want to do 
is kind of get this round the edge and just push your fork down. And that squashes the edge. So you won't get it spilling out everywhere. Okay. Again, I'm a little bit messy here. It's quite warm in this room. But don't worry. Just a log. We've got the edges washed down. Doesn't have to look pretty. This isn't a beauty pageant. And you know, just kind of caress it with your fork down the edge. Okay. Right. So if you feel they're a little bit close together, then feel free to get your scissors and basically slice through the sheet. Again, it can be a bit tricky sometimes. But I'm making a bit of a hash of it here. But Sure, when you guys do it, it's a bit easier. There we go. And what that does is just ensures that your pastry bits are spaced out. So, and then it's just there. Okay. Now I'm just gonna. in the world but you've got them there filled up nicely and shouldn't give them a little egg wash a little brush on the top doesn't have to be lots a little dab it makes them nice and shiny you know a bit fancier looking and I did have to tie this as a bit of a feast, okay? So, we're gonna have the luxury of an egg wash on top. There we go. So I want to shut this in the oven for around 20 minutes. You can give it a check, and then if you need to, then put it on for long. Right? What you can also do is fill these with jam and they taste pretty nice. Uh, I was going to do that for you, but it may not with you, I kind of forgot. So maybe next time we'll do it, but that's one thing you can do. You can fill it out with jam, with, with microwaved, um, well, I put it on anything, really. Oh, that's so good. Right, so that's a 180 there. Now these leftover leeks, what do you want to do with them? You can just eat them if you want to. I mean, that's a nice one. You can refrigerate them, you can eat them out them if you wanted to. So you've got a little bit of egg here, maybe you fancy. Fry it off. I don't like letting things go to waste. Bring a little bit up. Now 
Let me know what you thought of this, by the way. Uh, uh, I know it's a bit haphazard, uh, to be honest. It's been a bit of a long week. Um, so, a little bit frazzled. But, um, yeah, I'm doing good. Life's okay. What about you guys? What are you doing up to? So I'm going to just keep these links for later, maybe a little lunch on another day. So what I'm going to do is just make myself a little omelette. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Ezra. All right. Yeah, uh, to emphasize this dish is much simpler than it seems. Worrying about uh, narrating it and stuff. So if you want to make a little omelette, get add a little splash of milk to your egg. A bit of pepper. Sorry, that's salt. <laughs> uh, a bit of pepper and this salt. Mix it in there. Have a little low heat. I've never been that good at omelettes really, so this might not work out. Right, we've got a low heat there. Put that in there. There we So now you can do a little bit of cleaning up and stuff. Ha <laughs> ha! I know. We are, aren't we? Now, I have to resist the urge to check how the uh, oven's going, which I would usually do. Because, of course, if you take the uh, pastry out early, it will be, you know, uh, overdone. Well, sorry. Uh, if you take it down early, it'll be underdone. And also, the problem with taking pastry out of the oven earlier is it can sometimes deflate and you don't get that kind of rise that you want. So be patient, resist the urge to dip in there too much. By the way, I'm going to have to cut this short and then I will be back on. So I'm going to have to cut off the Instagram for a short moment and then continue, okay? Because the time limit is up. So those who are watching right now, Please stay with me, keep an eye, I'm going to be literally back very, very shortly, all right? See you soon. All right, bear with me. Hello again, everybody. I'm back, short break, uh, just to sort out a little tech issue, and also, well, just the Instagram live cut out, because I was uh, jabbering on for a little bit too long, so uh, the timing cannot contain the sheer majesty of this meal, so... Uh, but yeah, basically the food's nearly done. We've got like less than 10 minutes and then we've got the meal ready. So from beginning to end, pretty much this whole thing will take you around 45 minutes to an hour. Because uh, I've been nattering back and forth. Uh, it can take, you know, obviously not long, longer in my case. Hmm. But yeah, feel free to do a bit of cleaning up in the meantime, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah. I'll say a very simple dish and I'll have the recipe for the cauliflower cheese up very soon and if you have any cooking related questions then as always send them my way or life questions uh, I'll try and answer them. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's say. And anybody who's come into King's uh, and has any questions about that, about student life, about how things will be going and uh, you know, I don't know the best place to eat in London or uh, anything like that then you know, any questions then send them my way. I would love to have a chat with you guys. As always, it's always lovely seeing how you're all doing. Okay, so the cauliflower cheese is like, like 20 minutes, basically. 
So I'm going to take this out and have a look at it. Oh, yes. Nice pastry. Probably needs a little bit more. Around 10 minutes. So 30 minutes basically for the pastry. Cauliflower cheese. As you can see, a little bit burnt on top. Not quite picture perfect, but that's life. In fact, I quite like the little burnt bits. I don't know about you, but for me, that's what makes it uh, extra delicious. So there we go. There is the cauliflower cheese. Uh, and I'll stop trying to burn my hand on it. There you go. So we have our, our lovely roasted cauliflower there with our nice sauce with a little bit of kind of nutmeg flavour in there. Um, and I found this recipe works quite well. So just to break down again, what we put in here, we put uh, 30 grams of butter, 30 grams of flour, mixed those together, made a little sauce with 250 millilitres of semi-skim milk. Okay, so that was our roux, our sauce. In that you added 40 grams of cheese at least, 40 grams of cheddar, whatever cheese you have, cauliflower, whole cauliflower, chop up. Roasted cauliflower for uh, basically 20 minutes, and then after that, you add in, um, you put in your uh, sauce, mix it around, uh, and then put, sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top, and put that in there for about 15 minutes, really, 10 15 minutes. I'll put it in there for longer because I have more, more stuff, more cauliflower. Okay, so that's pretty much done in that state. So what I like to do to keep it warm, uh, if you're a bit ahead of schedule, if it's done, you can just um, put it back in the oven, you know, it'll be fine. Hundred degrees. If you've got a little oven there, obviously um, let's say you, uh, if you follow the timings I did, then pastry pass would be done. In fact, I'd probably be done in a few minutes. I like to keep my stuff nice and hot, but very soon everything will be done. And I'll post the recipe, as I say, in the Instagram story. Any questions? Fire away. I'm here. I'm milling around a little bit. That's basically done. Hope you enjoyed. I hope it was uh, not too hard to follow. I know I can be all around about the place, bouncing around, but <laughs> yeah. Another thing you can add to cauliflower cheese is broccoli, if you wish. I know uh, Jamie Oliver. He kind of adds a bit of blended sorry, blended broccoli to his sauce uh, for a bit of extra vegetable boost. I don't have cauliflower in do this week, but that's something you can do. Also, uh, we've had six weeks of this stuff, six weeks of kitchen hacks. So let me know basically what would you like to see next, okay? What would you like to see over the course of the rest of this month and into next month, into August? Uh, what sort of dishes, what sort of uh, kind of food do you want to see me tackle or what food maybe haven't you made before but you'd like to uh, kind of learn how to give it a try, uh, you know, or any suggestions, what suggestions do you have, you know, uh, what kitchen hacks, so to speak, uh, would you like to share, okay? So basically, as I say, sound off in the comments, uh, send me a message, you know, I don't know, but if you see me, you know, let's say around other events, feel free to let me know. But yeah, I'm always looking for new ideas, as I say, as to what sort of meal, what's anything, anything in the kitchen, you know? Baking, we can do a bit more baking if you fancy. I don't know, let me know, as I say. Uh, don't leave me hanging, because you might not like my ideas, so, you know, as I say, let me know. Oh. All right, we're nearly there. In the meantime, I'm just going to clean this stuff up and make you guys watch me. 
budget. And if there are any more King's grads, uh, 15 students, make yourself be known, guys. Hmm. Okay. As a reminder, you can also serve new potatoes, salad, with this sort of stuff if you want to go extra veggie. options you can use a handheld grater oh, let's not put that around you can use a handheld grater like this one or you can use a box grater where you you know grate it and you've got storage there so either of those things are quite good when it comes to grating cheese or any other stuff carrots again uh, I just use this because um, I could grate it directly into the scale, so you're into a bowl and measure it. Um, again, your choice. These little box grates are kind of handy too because you can take this bit off and you can even just use that by yourself. And it's adaptable, usually, you get a few different options there. So that's pretty much kind of one, one way of doing it. Hello again, Ezra. Thanks for coming back. And as I say, once again, let me know what you want to see next week. Otherwise, it will be a complete surprise. Because I thrive, and this whole thing is based off what you want to see. Okay? So keep letting me know what you want to see in the future on Kitchen Hacks. That was chai tea, by the way. Sorry, chai. That was masala chai, spice tea. Uh, I recommend it. Well, I quite like having a drink of tea. With a meal, when I'm cooking, because uh, if you drink tea, I mean, it makes you even warmer, so, and then it cools you down. Uh, drinking hot drinks cools you down. That's paradoxical. That's kind of help. Okay, I've got a little bit of a clean of space here, so, uh, a bit less of a mess later. It's always kind of helpful to clean up as you go, uh, then you have less to sort out once you've uh, finished eating your meal. Because I don't know about you guys, but there's no nothing worse than uh, having made a nice meal and then knowing after you've eaten the meal that you're going to have to wash up stuff. Uh, if you make these dishes separately, there's not as much washing up required. So, uh, obviously, uh, but pretty much. If you want to make cornflour cheese by itself, the great thing about that dish is it's basically just little sauce in the pan, uh, cornflour in the tray, sauce in tray, boom. That's all it is. So that's pretty nice and simple. Ooh. So in terms of the suggestions, front Ezra uh, suggests gluten-free muffins. Ooh. You gluten-free, Ezra, I take it? Uh, Muffins, yeah, definitely would be a great idea. Actually, I might work on that. Uh, muffins would be good. Next week, I said we could try that. Um, one thing when it comes to baking and stuff, obviously, uh, um, gluten-free baking is a slightly different beast. You need kind of special flours and stuff like that. Uh, we can definitely try that out, though, as I say. Um, with regards to also sort of uh, kind of gluten those who uh, you know have gluten intolerances and stuff and want to make a dish dish, cauliflower cheese, I'm sure that you guys know that there is you know gluten-free flour that you can get, uh, special types of flour basically. You could use that to make the little sauce instead 
and that would work perfectly fine, I believe. Uh, I know people have made that before, works quite well. So, we are so close, we are so close to the uh, dish coming, there we go, look at that, or hear that rather. <laughs> okay, so, thank you for your patience, I know it drags on a little bit, uh, but thank you for staying with me. Even if you haven't stayed with me, don't worry, don't hold a grudge. Okay. Let's have a look at them. Oh yeah. Oh yes, super nice. Ah, uh, no. So. Turn it over. Get that one off there. Okay, so. You can hear the crispiness. That's what you want. Okay, you want that nice crispy, uh, crispy sound, you can hear it. Let me show guys on Zoom, there you go guys. So those are leek vegetable parcels. I was trying not to burn my hands because I can't hold them too close to you. Thanks very much Ezra. Thanks Catcher. Um, all right. So we're pretty much done now and my family who have been waiting for this food as well, because I nattered for too long, they're probably uh, going to get a bit hungry, uh, and I've delayed them long enough. That's the problem. It's a bit of a chatterbox sometimes, so it means that uh, people don't get their food as quickly, okay? As I say, uh, this will take you much less time, usually. Let's take it out and show you both, shall we? Show you all uh, two dishes, side by side. Cauliflower cheese and lovely kind of little parcels and what you can kind of see if we just pick this up. Have a look at that. And the other side is kind of brown on the bottom there, that's what you want. And you want, when you go close to that cauliflower cheese, you can hear it slightly hissing. All right, that's what you want. So yeah, pretty much now, uh, that's all there is to be said. It's all done. So now I'm gonna go and have to uh, have dinner and I wish you all the best as I say once uh, basically after this um, I'll be online till 10pm uh, okay so I'll be around as I say if you have any questions um, about baking about um, cooking just about life as I say once again um, send those two to me as I say I'm on Instagram there and uh, you can reach me through WhatsApp and all that jazz so feel free to if you've enjoyed this, then please let me know, okay? And if you haven't, then please let me know, because um, I'd love to hear some more of your feedback. Um, thanks very much, Emma. Lovely to have you as well. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, hope the holiday as well was nice. But yeah, that's cauliflower cheese, oven baked, and that's uh, leek parcels as well in the oven. And I'll post the recipes up uh, once I've gotten these into my stomach. Uh, not the entirety, I'm not quite that greedy. Okay, so um, as I say, uh, have a lovely evening and it's been lovely uh, letting you in to my kitchen once again. So everybody, take care. I'm going to stick my face right into this now and <laughs> have a lovely evening, guys. Okay, as I say, bye bye. Bye, guys. Have a good evening.